doing all that talking and I forgot to turn on the mic. No one told me. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's Wednesday. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so we did an all overwash of Citadel's Adrets Earthshade. So once that's dry, we can, can start highlighting them up. So I'm gonna give them a quick blast with a hair dryer. Getting there. All the cracks and crevices, it's making it a little more difficult to dry. Alright. That should do it. Just the focusing on them a bit. Alright. Uh, let's do it. So we're going to continue with his mouth real quick. Get him all set up for that. So his... Um, his gums and the tongue and everything it was a mixture of tan flesh and magenta from Pro Krill. I just have a palette paper right here that I'm going to work off of. Hope everyone can hear me all right. Start the show and I forgot to turn on the mic. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna take a little bit of each. tone here like a pale peach color almost look like skin tone and just hitting the raised areas here on the gums
and this stage is when it really starts to come together when we start adding the highlights we want to keep the dark shadows you know the lower portions darker and start applying brighter colors on the raised areas So with this ton that's just kind of peeking out there, we're just doing a little dab on it. My lights. There we go. I think the <laughs> my hands and the camera is making the lights be funky. Hold on one second. Uh, let's check the white balance. if that works. Let's try something here. I guess we'll paint him like this. <laughs> oh, my camera's just washing this all out. Slight adjustments here on the camera. Trying to get it to... So with on the tongue, we want to give it some texture, so we're just kind of doing little dabs, you know, little dots on the tongue here.
lights are, my light is acting up here. I think one of my bulbs just went out. There we go. side here on this side of the teeth all right so we're going to add a little bit more of the tan flush the previous Metzger and make it a little bit lighter for the Nets highlight. Put a nice point on there. So kind of a more of a rosy skin type and just a smaller application here, more towards the center of the gums. So we got more of a kind of like a pinkish skin tone here. amount of detail on this is so cool. It's so it's it's phenomenal. It's a great model. Very fun to paint. Alright we're gonna add a bit of um ivory into it. Ivory from Procro. So I'm not actually putting the amount of paint into my mitts because I want to just gradually add that color just to make it a little bit lighter, not too too much of a change. just like spot highlights more on the center of the gums and up here on his the jaw muscles does the where he's looking off to the side so this will have more uh, lighting 
more highlights in this general area. And then back here will be you'll know, be darker, so he's like he's to make it look like he's coming out of the shadows and he's like staring and he's coming for you. He's looking towards the direction of the light, so it's like at this angle instead of straight on. That looks good. Why well, we already have our um, ivory on the palette here. Let's use this to add some color to the eyeballs. Of I did I painted some of the uh, pupils on some of the eyes on Monday. Kind of get how I want them to look. With these big eyeballs, you you actually are adding highlight and shadow, but on the smaller ones, smaller type of models, you don't really need to. These ones over here, I forgot to put the white on. He's got so many eyes. Alright, so I'm going to add another layer here closer to the edge and it's the same color but um, the, the layers are thin so adding a second one on top makes it brighter and then once we highlight this which is part of this color that'll really look cool really intimidating Now I'm going to add some um, bright ivory. I'm not going straight white because the white will make the eyes look like they're blinding. I have way too much light on myself. There you go. So the ivory is a very off-white, and the bright ivory is, you know, just brighter, <laughs> lighter, not quite pure white. Alright, so for this, I'm just kind of doing the edge of the eye of the white to make it stand out a little bit more here.
All right, so now we'll go ahead and paint the black pupil. I'm not doing straight black because I don't want it. Because it, it'll, it'll, using pure black to paint the pupil, um, one does make it look unnatural. It makes it look like he's staring very wide and in surprise. Same as uh, not using a pure white. It makes it too bright. And so we want to use an off-white, like an ivory. So, I'm, so for the actual pupil, I'm mixing a dark brown, in this case mahogany, which is kind of a reddish brown. With a little bit of coal black. I use the mahogany to paint the darkness, you know, paint the shadow, and I'm just building from that. So the big eye is actually quite easy to, because it's sculpted, <laughs> to, to paint this in. But the people, the eye tendrils up here, we're just going to paint the eye the pupil of the eye. So it's, you can make them round or uh, like an oval. You can do kind of a slit so it looks like a cat's eye or, or dragon eye. So however you want to want to do that. Best bet is to look at reference on how eyeballs are. So you find where it, a lot of these are, they're mainly um, centered. I'm not doing them off centered or anything because these all they're all pointed to one direction so with these pointing to this side like he's looking right there if I were to do the eyes you know looking else you know at a, a at a different angle it wouldn't convey that he's looking at one thing with all his eyes so he's ready to he's concentrated on that one aspects and say the brush in that sense they're all looking at the brush ready to ready to pounce on it so with the, this eyeball I'm kind of doing more of a um, oval an oval shape So, now these ones over here, they're kind of pointing straight, but I want them all looking roughly in the same direction, so I'm going to do an off centered. Make sure that your paint's flowing really well, nice and smooth off your brush. In most cases, you just need, you know, if you clean your brush, clean your brush before you dip it into your paint. Um, you know, clean your brush, wipe it off. There's still moisture in it, and that should be enough to help the paint flow. But some, in some cases, you might have to add more paint, more um, sorry, more water to help it to flow better. You want to, 
as you can see, it's taking the majority of the center of each um, eye or iris. The iris. So now I'm going to take my pure black and we're going to paint the upper portion of the eye to make it a bit darker. Now when you're painting eyes, just like if you paint uh, gems, it's reflective or a reflective area um, and the highlights are actually flipped. So normally when you paint something, the raised areas get your uh, highlights and the darker, you know, the recessed areas get your shadow. So if you look at my hand here, right at this point here on my thumb, where the light's catching it, that's much brighter than down here. With um, the reflectiveness of an eye or a jewel or a gem, it's actually flipped. So when the light catches it, you know, um, comes in it's actually there'll be that spot that white spot at the top but it'll be dark shadows at the top area and the color of the gem or the eye or whatever is reflective on the bottom of the area so when the light comes in you'll see that bright light that little like spot of white where the light's coming into the area and it's reflected on the bottom portion of it so like I did here on this the bottom of the eye is in red and then I have that white dot at the top Mahogany is a great um, shade color for the reds. This is a nice triad for the reds. So going from dark mahogany, which is a dark reddish brown, to burnt red, which is a dark red, to bold pyro red, which is a pure red. So we already got the mahogany in there. And I'll start adding the red. I wanted to give him some kind of like red demon looking eyes. We'll put that burnt red on the palette here. I want to get a nice point on my brush so I'm dragging it and twisting it to get a nice tip. And it's just a little lip, you know, just a like half a like a crescent or a slither of col color. 
in the bottom portion of the eye. But we want to keep that black underneath it so the black is um, uh, framing it. Back here. There we go. All right, so now some bold pyrrol red. Very bright, pure red. same thing but even a smaller area so now I'm building my highlights going further down so it's almost like you're looking at it this way where you have your dark shadow going up to the midtone then to your highlights little eyeballs up here this is just mainly just a small little dot some um, tan flesh, some skin tone into that red for highlight color. I don't want to add orange or yellow to the red because then that uh, if I add yellow or, or an orange paint it looks more orange and I don't want that orange highlight. I want it more in the red. Adding a tan flesh to your red makes it look it gives that a little more natural look. Uh, if you add white it, to the red, it takes it straight to the, the pink and very pastel. And that's not the look I'm going for here. And this is just very at the bottom. It's like the previous layer, it's very, very light. So here's the highlight. So it's almost, it's not quite a pink, like a, a bright pink, because adding white to it makes it really bright. Uh, adding ivory, you know, it also gives it that very bright. But adding a flesh tone to your red, it it kind of gives it um, almost like a peach tone. But you don't want to go too, too much with this highlight, because then it could be too... Uh, overpowering the red and then it starts turning into like the salmon color we want to keep that red if you add too much flesh tone or I mean you can use ivory to it and it does give you a, a brighter highlight but you want to do it um, in very small areas because it, it can be oversaturate the red and make it too bright or too um, pastel but if you do happen to do that you can you can add 
red glazes or a, re a thin red ink to the area and that'll that vibrancy of that will make the red pop back up pop back out I should say All right. So now I'm go to my ivory on my palette here. Add some more water. There we go. I wanted the flow really well off the brush. So now I'm just going to add that point where the light's coming in. So it's just a small dot in the upper corner. For this, I'm going to switch over to my wet palette over here. Because I'm mixing up colors and I don't want it to dry on the dry palette. This is just palette paper. Alright. Let's go ahead and do the burgundy here. base coat of that was mahogany and purple. Just trying to catch those raised areas like we did with the gums. I think I need to get a new lamp. My lights not working. It just seems too dark. So we're just catching the raised areas, leaving that darker color in the recesses here, or on the lower portions of it. You know, so I'm concentrating my highlights up at the top portion of the scales here. So, I mean, you can see where the raised, where it's raised up, where the shadow colors 
accumulated down in through the recesses. So now we're just catching the edges and the raised portions with this color. And we're leaving that mid-tone in the middle and having that dark color down in the, the recesses. So it's building that up. Like a pyramid where you have the, the base coat and then the next layer and smaller and smaller to the point and that as you're building up your highlights so the very edges will be a bright highlights so I'm not going to go and highlight all the areas of the, the scales because some of it is up in, you know, underneath area, uh, underneath other areas that would cast shadows on it. So there's no point of adding highlights to it because you want to keep those shadows there. <laughs> well, I guess we'll leave that off. It kept coming out. It, it It's supposed to do that. <laughs> it is removable. They have a, a separate piece on some of them that you can add that's got these uh, I-beams. I'll be painting separate. The scales and stuff looks very much like a pine cone. So he's like a f floating eyeball pine cone. Pine cone with an eye type thing. Very funny. And I can speed this up by taking a dry brush and dry brushing it, but um, he's got all these large bone plates sticking out, so it's it would get onto those, and I'd have to repaint them. So it's just easier just to come through here with the brush and just catch the edges. And I'll be doing the same process up here with just the, the blues. because the under parts of those have the same color. We want it a little bit brighter right in the center.
back. Alright. So I'm going to do a quick little dab of glue on that. Glue that back in there. All right, a little bit of um, ivory into that mitts that I just did for my highlights. So this is the color I just used. This is the highlight. So the same same thing, just in smaller areas. More towards the center or the edges of whatever you're highlighting. Just the same thing, we're just keeping it very thin edge lighting. Just where the light's catching it. So I'm holding it up to my lamp and seeing where the light's reflecting off it, where it's brightest, and I'm just applying the highlight at that point using the, the lamp as my guide where I should place those highlights. Because the focus of the face is right here. Right at that point. So the majority of the, the lighting will be at that. You know, and of course that moves for the whole model, but that's the focus point right there because you're looking right at mainly at this eye and then that general area. So about there. 
the back will have highlights, but it won't be as much as it is right there. So we're going to do one more highlight after this, mainly on this portion. We'll get some highlights up here on the tendrils. I get all the areas I want highlighted. Sometimes with all these, on this type of model, all the details, you've, <laughs> there's always the chance of missing one of them. So we're going to add a little bit more um, ivory to the previous mats, just making it a little bit lighter.
still there. No. I, uh, I just glued one in. <laughs> um, because... I have the ones with the I-beams. I'm going to paint them separate and then put them together and see how I... If I want to have them interchangeable or have them glued together. So... Yeah, in case I needed to pull one out to reach an area, but they're pretty good. This one just kept popping out, so I just I glued that a little bit ago. So this is the net's highlight, and so I'm just bringing it closer to the edge. where the brightest point will be. So just at the very top edge of them. So I'm not going to worry about adding this highlight down here because that's all down below under the chin so it'd be naturally in shadow so it wouldn't have the brighter highlights. So as I get further and further with the highlights it gets smaller and smaller the areas that I apply it. And sometimes I might have to go back in and um, redefine some shadows add you know make it darker and kind of go back and forth to adjust the lighting in the shadows and the best way to figure out where that is is to hold it under your lamp and where the light shines down that's the brightest point and then you know obviously under you know, opposite of that area is your shadows That's why I'm keeping it at this angle right here as I'm looking at it because that's my focal point is just right there. That's where it's going to be the brightest and then back here it'd be the darkest because all the eyes are looking in this direction so I want that to be the, the focal point. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> for this weekend, I already painted one for you for this weekend. Oh wait, did oh you had a different one to, that you wanted printed out? That's right. <laughs> Do you get those other ones that you wanted printed? Yeah, it's never ending. What was the total of models that we painted, Justin, last night? Oh, okay. What was the total of models that were painted uh, last night and Saturday? I was trying to figure it out how, mu how much I that I painted. I think it was like 29 between the two days. Oh, okay. Jeez. 
We'll have to get a group shot of them. I'm thinking of I might stop by Friday and enter this guy into the painting contest because he's turning out really nice. So I'm thinking about it. Maybe because I think it's or it's sat. I think it's Friday that you can en you can start entering pieces. <laughs> the other enlarged doors. <laughs> For everyone in the chat wondering what we're chat we're talking about, um, if you were, if you happen to catch Saturday's stream this past Saturday, uh, Justin, also known as Crimson Blades, I was over at his house and we we're doing speed painting of Dungeons and Dragons models for a convention that's this weekend a local convention he's he's running about seven different campaigns for dungeons and dragons adventures adventures league and he has a he had a, a quite a lot <laughs> of uh, models uh the majority of them were 3d printed that he printed up on, a, on his own printers and we were doing speed painting of painting them up getting them ready we worked on them saturday during the day and also on my my stream and then he came over yesterday and we were, we were working on the rest of them last night. So I think he's pretty much got all of them that he needed for for his campaigns. Is that right? Did you get, are you like really close to being done with them? Or you keep adding stuff in the, the last final hours? <laughs> The large eye lens piece. Because this is what else came in it. Here, I'll go ahead and open it up. And we can look at it. Oh, well, let's see what we got in here. This also came in the the bot. So we got the base that we can attach them to. <laughs> oh. Is that what this is? Is that what that is? that that's very cool <laughs> it's like an eye visor now that I put it on there I can't get it off <laughs> I was wondering what that that piece was when I was looking in the in the bag that's interesting hmm I don't know about that I might, I may or may not do that, because it, it makes it look weird. I was planning on putting um, a gloss varnish over the eyes and over the the gums and the the mouth and everything to make it kind of look moist and glistening. Yeah, so he's got these with these uh, clear energy bolts that I'm gonna paint separate and then attach them on there. I like this one. 
Yeah, because that's what I've done before. And this just looks... It looks cool, but it, it's kind of... It looks cool, but it also looks weird. Let's see how far I get on them. Yeah, because they look like a, a windshield type thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll color the spell fats. Uh, I was thinking kind of um, a green. Either a green or orange. Like a bright green. So these are just very fine lines of the highlight on the very edges. Yeah, this is masking tape over the, the flight stand because I didn't want to get any paint on it because uh, I used an airbrush to do a, the base coating and of the skin. As you can see, this is... So I don't get it on the, uh, the clear flight stand. Even if I did, I wasn't using a um, the the airbrush on it. If I was just using regular brushes, I'd still would put that over there because um, that clear plastic once it gets paint on it, it's kind of hard to take it off. So it's just a it's just protected protecting it. And this is regular masking tape. It's nothing fancy. Kind of looking at it all angles to see what needs highlights and where to place them. And just make sure I don't miss any spots. Never fails as you're rotating a piece that you're working on and then you realize you miss a, a whole section. And of course, feel free to ask questions in chat, things like that. Don't feel like you're going to interrupt me from painting. The whole point of my streaming is to, you know, just hang out and chat with people and answer questions if you have it. If you're having problems with, you know, your painting your, and have questions, feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer them. Don't don't feel like you're interrupt interrupting me or anything like that. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
Don't knock them over. <laughs> Don't knock them over. That's the best way. Yeah. Thanks, Crimson. <laughs> I've only done it once, and I think you said you've done it two or three times. Because so. when you dip into the paint pot, don't just dip into it where it's sitting like here. Hold. You can also hold on to it as you dip into it and then grab your model. That works too. Smart Alec. <laughs> well, that's better than um, thrice, thrice. It's the same color, isn't it? Is it the same color that you keep tipping over? Get yourself some uh, two-sided sticky tape. Stick that on your your desk. Pull that off. Stick it on there. It's not going anywhere. Known oil and adrats. Ugh. You poor thing. You know you could always transfer them into dropper bottles. Yeah, that's why I keep it way up here, so I don't take the chance of if I'm working at this area that I knock it over, so I keep it further away from me. And I also kind of like prop it up between things, so I won't take the chance of accidentally knocking it. It happens. All right, so let's go ahead and start on the blue. Okay, so the base coat that I did on on the blue, or the the, the gray blue, is dark gray, dark gray blue, and black coal black mitts. So after doing the wash over, it's very dark compared to this color, as you can see. So doing this straight away, I can start building up the highlights. so many little little scales on the top of his head goodness all right so I'm kind of just dragging my brush across the upper portions of it to speed it up so if I sit here and try to highlight every single one at a time it's just gonna take longer than I want And also if I do the side of my brush, I have more area of the paint. Dragging it across there.
No, not really dry brushing because um, the areas are so small and I don't want to take the chance of uh, getting it on other areas. I don't want to get blue onto the, you know, the bone spikes there. So I'm kind of just, uh, in the sense, edge highlighting or line highlighting, but I'm also do using the side of my brush to drag it over the top of the area. So it's not that dusting you get with the dry brush. So just quickly dragging it across the with the edges, the raised areas will still catch that paint, and it's a little it, it'll look smoother than a dry brush. Dry brush can get chalky, leave chalky um, texture. And I want to be more precise of where I have my highlights. And sometimes with an with a dry brush, you get paint where you don't want. So. And here on the uh, the eye tendrils or whatever they call them, um, I'm just kind of tapping as I go along, making little hash marks like that. That gives me a texture to the skin, so it's not just straight lines like race car stripes. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I gotta feed the boy. Gotta feed the kids. Thanks for joining in.
he's starting to look really good. <laughs> Truly creepy. Definitely like the, the color difference here. Definitely I'll have to do some brown or you know brown lining in here in the mouth to help separate it. Because right now it's just like all I think once I highlight the teeth that'll help differentiate it. Because it's not, it, it, I'm not sure, it just it doesn't look separated. So I'll add some darker shadows around the gum line. these areas here. <laughs> That's the plastic material. Is it just because of the edging on it? The, the material itself it can be rough? How is that ruining your brushes. Ah, <laughs> uh, and it's not smooth. Is that what it is? The layer lines and it's not smooth. So you have that edges. Ah, I see. Isn't there a way to put like a coating over it to smooth out 
those layer lines. And not lose detail. <laughs> yes and no. Yeah, but the filler primer, it will fill up the the detail as well. I thought maybe there's something that you could brush on in certain air, you know, on it. Because spraying it with the filler primer, you're going to fill in all the detail that you got. It seems like the plastic is better for like large scenery pieces or stuff that doesn't have a whole lot of detail and then using the resin for um, for your detailed models I think it's just not the right material for certain for certain models Uh, well, yeah, that's what I saw you do, and and I mean it makes sense. Certain material for certain for certain pieces. Yeah. I mean, if the models don't have a whole lot of detail then using that PLA wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Probably. I wonder if you spray it with a um, a matte varnish, like I was mentioning when I was over at your place today, uh, over it before priming it, and that will give it that will settle in the lines and everything, and kind of make it a coating, and then you start your primer over that and uh, add your paint. Because I know the PLA, and you've mentioned it, 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 it's very porous, porous, and so it soaks the paint, and so it's it's hard to uh, apply the base coats and such to to get a nice coverage.
right, so now we're going to go to the Nets layer. And for my highlights for this, I'm going to add this uh, faded ultramarine color, which is a, as a kind of like a pale blue gray, or pale blue, for that matter. Kind of like a baby blue. I just hit the camera. <laughs> there we go. So this will be this is the base coat right here, and that's the highlight. Just dragging the brush across the texture here and gonna speed it up here. Yep, it's seven thirty, about a half hour left for tonight. Hey Justin, start preparing for your uh D and D game tonight if you haven't already. I'm reminding you. So you say you run out of time to get prepared for your game. If you're not already prepared, you should start preparing. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go around and do all the scales and then come back and do the, the eye tendril thing about bobs. <laughs> already cleaned up your brushes all right keeping you on track Yep, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. 
same thing what I did with the the purple tone burgundy. So just slowly building up the highlight, getting smaller and smaller areas. progression of highlights I do, highlights uh, stages, I just add more of that faded ultramarine. speed this up I'm just dragging my brush across and having that the the sculpt itself the raised areas catching the paint so just a little quick flick of the brush across the model and it's just cat the it's just catching the paint off it some blue on that area. Right, so we'll add some more faded ultramarine to the previous color. Then that's highlight, so we want it just a little bit lighter. So on this stage, it's just very small dots on the scales, the very edges. Same idea as I did on the tendril things, is dragging the side of the brush across the top of the, the model so those points on the scales catch the paint. Very similar to dry brushing, but it's, it's I'm not sure what we can call that. <laughs> 
edge highlighting. Quick, quick highlights. <laughs> So as we get further and further with the highlights, it's smaller and smaller area, so it goes back faster. And now you can kind of pinpoint where you want the most prominent highlights, the brightest points to be. tendrils, just very small, thin lines. Just where the light's catching at, the brightest points. Eye stocks? The eye stocks for what? On this or what what are you talking about? Crimson, what are you talking about? Oh, tendrils. I stopped. I. So what are they? Are they called tendrils? Is that what the name of them? They're not tendrils. I stops. They're called I stops. It's my model. I can say what I want to. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> I want to call them tendrils, I'll call them tendrils. No, I don't want to call them ice dots now, because you corrected me. Yeah. <laughs> when I hear stocks, it reminds me of uh, corn stocks. So, you know, they're, they're stable, you know. These move around, so they remind me of tendrils. Try not to hit the camera this time. <laughs> Sound as smart as I am? I should know the lingo, huh? So now I have it stuck in my head that they're they're called tendrils, so
<laughs> yeah, you, you, you don't know everything. <laughs> See, so it's the opposite. You've been playing D&D &D for 29 years. I've been painting for about that same time. And we say that I've only been painting for like nine months and you've been... <laughs> it's the other way around now. See, and you also have the book. You have the book right there. So I don't have the book. So you can look it up. In my world, they're called tendrils. So there. See, I'm, I'm going to be stubborn about it. I'm going to call them tendrils from now on. Just to irk you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm done for the blue on that. So let's go ahead and work on his b the bone bone spurts. So we're gonna use my properly named bone mitts, which is one and one ivory and light umber. So we're going to just make thin lines dragging from about the center up to this the end. Work like making a mountain. I believe it's running well. And I believe she is, she's been working with and saying that it's been working well today. So thank you very much for, for helping with that. So with here, with the little bone spikes, I'm just, because it's kind of a shape of a, a mountain peak point. <laughs> yeah, anytime when you have time. <laughs> uh, I'm just dragging the this highlight towards the center point up at the edge. And it's already been, it's got uh, sculpted lines in it. So with the wash, it's just darkened that up. So I'm just hitting the raised areas and just drawing very fine lines, bringing it to the end, the point. And then with my highlight for this, I'll just be adding ivory to it. And so I'm doing about, oh, Oh, about three quarters of the way to about half down and then pulling it up to the edge 
So with my nets highlighted, it would be about half of that. So starting here and bringing it up to the edge. So you want to make sure you have a nice point on your brush. To make it make those uh, thin lines to show the cracked and edges of the bone. one real quick and then I'll show how I'm going to do it on the teeth here. So the same thing, I'm going to bring the paint down to the point of the tooth, but keeping it darker up here next to the gum. So about, oh, halfway. So just very thin lines making, you know, like a teepee or a pyramid down to the point. flip them, do the same thing on the bottom teeth. Not worried about on the inside because I'm getting most of it, you know, what, where the paint will be. I don't need to get right behind it, maybe like right here on this one. I'm not going to do the whole thing right now. I want to show you the, the different steps before the end of the stream. So we have that layer. So now we're going to add some ivory to the bone. Just make it a little brighter. So the same thing, but just further up on the end. more towards the point, the outer edge, more like. So if you look at a, uh, a mountain, a snow-capped mountain, how it goes from the dark um, color of the mountain up to the snow and it gets brighter and bright you know as you get to the top where the, the light's shining off the snow it's much brighter because it's reflect the snow is reflecting the light same idea it's here so this is the 
you know, right, and it's perfect with these little spikes because they're uh, mountain shaped, like little mini mountains on his side of his face. So now at the right here at the tip there, I'll add more ivory and just join smaller and smaller towards the peak of it. And if I want to, on these bigger ones, do a very small bit of just pure ivory. And that's the same thing when you're doing highlights even on a cloth. Say on this one. The base coat was um, turquoise and I did an all over wash of brown so it, set it settled into all the, the recesses. So now I'll go over with the turquoise on this edge right here because you can see where the light's shining off where it's much brighter on the edge that's where I'll put my highlight and the the brush I'm not sure that's not really showing up so but um so the same thing is I'll put the base coat leaving the dark recess you know the the recesses and shade and then I'll come with the highlight and do a little bit smaller and then another lighter shade if I want even smaller so it's building that peak where you have your base and smaller and it gets smaller and smaller as you get to the edge now on a round surface it's easier to see that with um, like cloth where it it, it is that um, mountain point or pyramid point you can see where as you get to the edge that's where your brightest highlight will be now on a round surface like here on her 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 staff it's curve so you have the center of the curve at the very top that will be where your highlight is so instead of you know the pyramid going straight up like that you have the curvature and that right in the center of that curve um, will be your your brightest highlight. All right, so now we know how the end result will be. I'll just go ahead back to just uh, bone color and paint up the rest of the areas. Like we got about oh ten more minutes. So this guy's pretty much almost done. I just have to finish up the bone and teeth areas, and then I'm gonna add a, a few more highlights, maybe some dark shadows to it. I don't know yet, but I'm pretty happy with the way he's looking. I want to add some of that gloss varnish to the tongue and the gums and on the eyeballs just to help make it look like it's glistening. Because the, the Pro Acryl paints, they dry very matte, so it, it has no shine. So that matte finish on the rest of the monster with the gloss shine on the eyes will give, that, will give it a nice... Um, for a uh, nice appearance, it'll it'll break up the up the areas. You know, you have the the, the eyes, the tongue, the gums that 
would be all all wet to this dry patchy scale that he's got going The eye stops. I said the eyes. No, the stock itself, they're not going to be glass varnish. The eyeballs themselves. <laughs> you know I do that just to irritate you. <laughs> but I need to be careful. I don't want to piss off my... Off the GM. Because next time we play a game, you're going to definitely kill me off. these chin spikes it was like a little uh, little goatee <laughs> type thing <laughs> yeah I don't need I don't need your help to die in the game my dice just always fail me. Well, that's always the case, even in um, tabletop gaming, miniature gaming. <laughs> sometimes they work really well, and sometimes they don't. Definitely makes it fun. <laughs> oh, how many times did I die in last our last session? I think it was like three that I was literally near death or I died. I think I fully died like twice. No, more than that. Just going around and painting up these little spiky bits. Bone spikes. Bone spurs? Bone spikes. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be good. Well, they laugh at it. <laughs> They, they laugh at it, too. They're like, come on, Dad, seriously? I thought it was funny in the last one where they, they both climbed up the ledge and left <laughs> me and Mom... <laughs> on the ledge to fight the zombies. And they're like, okay, see ya.
right. We'll finish up this one real quick. This part. So I'll work to get the rest of the area to that point and then just touch up some stuff. But he's pretty much done and then just I need to do the base, which will be a kind of like a stone, gray stone area. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna continue with him on stream on Saturday. I'll I'll be working on a different piece because he's pretty much done. So there's not a whole lot more to show off on him. But uh, when I have uh, completed pictures, they'll be posted on my social media stuff. So, all right, Crimson, have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for coming by. So, as I was saying, uh, there's nothing more that I'm going to show on the stream for him. He's pretty much done. I just need to do some final uh, highlights and touch ups on him and then do the base, and then he'll be done. So on a Saturday's stream, I'll be painting something different. But like I said, I'll have completed pictures of him posted up on my um, social media. So if you'd like to see completed pictures, please consider, if you haven't already, to click on those links down below to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. And you can see the completed pictures of him and my other work that I do. Also, if you haven't already and would love to find out next time I stream, uh, please click on that follow button. I uh, My schedule is Mondays and Wednesdays, 5.30 to 8 Central Standard Time, and Saturdays, 3 to 5.30 Central Standard Time. So it's like an afternoon painting session. So thank you all for coming in and hanging out with me on Wednesday, on this fine Wednesday. And hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Night now.